Hi folks, this is Checkpoint Quiz 1.6. We're given two functions, f and g, and we're asked to do some function arithmetic with them. So in part a, we're asked to look at g minus f of x, and how do we subtract functions? We subtract their outputs. So, I go look at the formula for g, it's x squared minus 9. And once again, anytime you do a substitution in algebra, it pays to use parentheses when you replace it to avoid common mistakes. I'm going to subtract from that the formula for f of x, 2x plus 6. And it's really important you remember the parentheses here. So we simplify x squared minus 9 minus 2x minus 6. So if you didn't use the parentheses, there's a good chance you would have forgotten uh, to take the opposite of that 6. Combine the like terms, I've got an x squared minus 2x minus 15. So that would be the formula for g minus f of x. As far as domain considerations go, remember you want to find the domain before you simplify and so the step in which you replace the function formulas is where you want to go looking for domain. So the two things I have to watch out for in domain are denominators and even indexed radicals like square roots and fourth roots. None of those appear here, which means that I have no restrictions, which means my domain is all real numbers minus infinity to infinity. So that'll do it for A. And B, we're asked to look at the quotient f divided by g of x. And how do we divide functions? We divide their outputs. So we divide the formula f of x by the formula g of x. And so I replace f of x with the quantity 2x plus 6. And I replace g of x with the quantity x squared minus 9. Since I do have a fraction, I want to see if I can reduce it at all, which means I need to look for common factors. So in the numerator, I can factor a 2 out, and I'll be left with an x plus 3. And in the denominator, I can factor that as the difference of two squares, x minus 3, x plus 3. And lo and behold, I have a common factor of x plus 3 that I can cancel from the numerator and denominator. And so my final simplified formula is 2 divided by x minus 3. And once again, when it comes time to look for domain, I look for the domain before I simplify. So in the step where I made the substitution, that's right there. And I do have a denominator I have to worry about. So I'm going to set that denominator equal to 0 and find the troublemakers and then throw them out. If I set this equal to 0, you can factor, add the 9, take square roots. No matter how you slice it, you're going to get x equals plus or minus 3. If x is plus or minus 3, that makes the denominator 0, which makes the function undefined. So my domain, then, would be x is except plus or minus 3. And using the interval notation, you'll get negative infinity to negative 3, union negative 3 to 3, union 3 to infinity. Now notice it's important we found the domain before we simplified. If I had just looked at this formula, then I would easily see that x can't be 3, but what I would be missing is the fact that x can't be negative 3 because that was canceled out. We'll have more to say about this kind of canceling and, and the effects on domain and graph in chapter 4. That'll do it for number 1. Okay, number two, we're given a function, and we're asked to find and simplify its difference quotient. So I need to figure out f of x plus h. I need to subtract off the f of x and divide that by h. So when I substitute here, once again, I'm going to use grouping symbols. I'm going to use brackets because these function expressions can get a little bit out of control. So f of x plus h means to do what? Everywhere I see an x in my expression, 
I'm going to replace it with the quantity x plus h. So I have the opposite of the quantity x plus h squared plus 2 times the quantity x plus h minus 3. So this is the f of x plus h piece. And I'm going to subtract from that the f of x piece, which is the opposite of x squared plus 2x minus 3. That's the f of x piece. And this is all divided by h. And so our goal is to simplify. And if we've done everything correctly, the promise is that that h will cancel out from the denominator. Okay, so let's simplify what's going on in this first group. First, I'm going to take care of this perfect square. And remember, when in doubt, write it out. This means the quantity x plus h times the quantity x plus h. So you get x squared plus 2xh plus h squared plus, distribute the 2, 2x plus 2h minus 3. And now I can distribute this uh, subtraction through here. If I subtract the opposite of x squared, that's the same as adding x squared. I'm subtracting 2x, and then I'm going to be adding 3. And this is still all divided by h. Now I'm going to distribute this negative through and take uh, get rid of the grouping symbols. I have the opposite of x squared minus 2xh minus h squared plus 2x plus 2h minus 3 plus x squared minus 2x plus 3 all divided by h. And now it's time for the massacre to begin. If I'm going to truly be able to cancel the h out of the denominator, everything without an h in the numerator has to be destroyed. So I have the opposite of x squared there. I'm adding x squared there. Those are going to cancel. I have a positive two, or plus 2x. Then I'm subtracting 2x. Those will cancel. I have a minus 3 and a plus 3, and those cancel. And so everything left over has an h in the numerator. Okay, so the numerator now. I have negative 2xh minus h squared plus 2h, which survives. And now I try to factor and cancel common factors. I have an h in common to every term in the numerator, so I'll factor that out. And I'll be left with a negative 2x or minus 2x minus h plus 2, all divided by h. That cancels out. And so my final answer, minus 2x minus h plus 2, with the caveat that we couldn't do the canceling if h were 0. That'll do it for number 2, and that'll do it for Checkpoint Quiz 1.6.